All right, guys, welcome back to LM Diesel, and today we're taking a break from the Jeep project, and we're actually going to be working on my truck for a change. So we are at Unrivaled Diesel right now. This is Chris Patterson's shop. And first off, Chris Patterson is an awesome guy to work with. He has offered to help us with this build. And it's gonna be great to just have like his expertise on it. So today, the goal is to get the trans out of the truck. So let's get to it. All right, guys. We got Caleb Buford, of course we got the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Chris Patterson. How's it going? Going good. You excited? Oh, bro, absolutely. Me too. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Yeah, it's going to be a good build. Alright, man. We're doing rollies in no time. Rollies in no time. Rollies in no time. Ooh, boy. Look at that. Those... Look at all that smoke. Your 400% burn burnt cleaner than this know, thing. I know, I'm going like these stock injectors suck, dude. runs around here except for the one that takes gasoline. <laughs> one thing that takes gas never runs. When are you going to diesel swap this thing, man? Kawasaki has a diesel. I don't even have time to diesel swap the truck. I want a diesel swap. So the old Dodge is going up on a lift. And to be honest, I've never actually seen this truck on a lift, which is odd for me because my old black Suburban, I had that thing on the lift about a thousand times. So we got Jake, trusty Jake. He's working on the truck. He knows what he's doing. And I'm going to put his Instagram up here. Jake, how you feeling? What do you, what do you think of the old girl? Well, it's pretty clean. It's pretty clean. It needs some work. But yeah. I think it will be pretty sweet going down the track. Yeah, that's, that's the hope, man. So what all goes into taking something like this apart? So you got to get the drive shafts off, right? Yeah, the drive shafts and the transfer case, uh, all the connectors and the uh, shift cable off the transmission and then... Uh, you gotta take the torque converter bolts out the front by the engine and she's ready to come out pretty much. Alright. Be done it a few times? Yeah. Tranny's out. It's time for Chris to do his magic. And uh, that's how they do it. That's that. That's that. Chunk it down there. We don't need it. It's too small. Single disc because there's no, there's like one lip. If it was a triple, it would have two or three little lips right there. You said it's a recon single disc? Yeah. There she goes. Boom. So this is how you change oil in your transmission. You take it out. So have you basically memorized where every bolt goes on these things by now? <laughs> yeah. It's one of those things where when you start off, a lot of people that are good at this never had any real training. They just kind of broke their trans and pulled it out and pulled it apart and saw what was broke and made the changes necessary. And that's exactly how I learned how to do it. Yeah. Uh, I went to TSTC in Waco and have a degree in all this, but when it was time, I had a 79 Chevrolet truck and it had a turbo 350 and the training went out and the instructor was like, well, you can't fix that. I had questions. He was like, you can't do that. You haven't had my class. I'm like, I got no choice. I have to fix I it. I got to drive back and forth. So I went home and learned how to build it. It took me two or three times, but I learned how to build it. Junk. Yeah, did you see that plastic thingy? That's what I'm saying. I yeah, was like, this ain't that. no built transmission. And then, no. And then the stock spring? No. 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 And then all this is stock. Never been. Yeah, no, no. It's Lever, strut, strut, anchor thingy. All of it's... It's all stock. Yep. Crap. Here, that's your direct drum. That's third gear. I see. So it goes from being stationary held to the next shift. It has to be driven. The timing between releasing the band and applying direct clutch mm. is very 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 important 
or hmm. else you get a bind or a flare. Which is what this thing was having. A horrible flare. And then it all broke. For on like 200 horsepower. This is your pump area. All right. That one just so happened to stick to it. But it's supposed to go down there. Fall nice. in between, get the lugs, get the phone call. You get everything. Perfect. You know, sometimes they'll be like really blown out. That was nice and smooth. We'll have it resurfaced. Yeah. If we use this stator support tube. Okay. If we get the Sancher shaft, we don't need this guy. <laughs> it's definitely got some, you can see all the little scratches. Yeah. So we got some real nice gears we'll run in here. If this all looks really good, they'll do the same thing down here. They'll like blow out if the valve body's set up wrong and it has a whole lot of converter apply pressure. It'll blow all this crap out from pushing too hard. Uh, so it all looks really good there. I like what I see so far. Good. <laughs> Here's your problem. Here's your problem. Yeah, that's it. What's so, that? It feels like the direct clutches are welded together. Okay. But this drum is splined to the clutches inside here. So your input drum, this is called your Ford. This clutch is on all four gears. Right. It has big teeth on the inside that go into the direct drum. And the clutches in there feel like they're welded because it should just slip out. I and see. it's not. There you go. Nice. See? So they get stuck on there. And all these little marks here are just heat? Yeah, most of the time. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like maybe that's the path where all the friction material comes out when it's a couple hundred degrees, you know? Right. I don't know exactly what that is, but generally that's what I see, you know, is that, that's all heat. Yeah, some heat on the... You can actually see how it's sprung. Right. That means that the friction is not flat, the friction's beveled. It oh, has boy. a cone effect. So, we'll start here. Slide that guy. Grab this dude. They even come with their own workbench, man. Hey, man. Isn't that handy? <laughs> Take the snap ring out. This is your Ford. This is on in all gears. First, second, third, and fourth. Looks pretty fair. Looks like a stock transmission. This looks better than most that come out. Belleville spring down here. Spring that's bent. Piston applies in the center. Comes up. Hits this little doodad. Compresses. Makes the clutch. So all that looks really good. That's good. Obviously, we tear it down further later once we clean this this component. You know, sure. right now we're just tearing down to see the meat and potatoes. And we'll uh, probably do a new set of clutches in there, right? Like, how... no. oh no, we're gonna save like three dollars and not put new clutches. In. Oh, okay, good, good, good. <laughs> no, we're save definitely like three dollars. Yeah, no, we're definitely doing a nice clutch pack. Yeah. All right, we're gonna do all nice clutches, but I can't afford all of them, so we're gonna save one of the junk ones and just throw it in there. How's that? Sound? But we get the Sancher shaft. But yes, but we get the Sancher shaft. <laughs> Priorities, people. Yeah. Priorities. All right, so we'll move on to third gear. All right. Obviously, you can tell we got some burning from our band. Whether it was loose or tight or just never adjusted, you know, leaked, low line pressure, slipped it with horsepower, whatever. Third gear had, our second gear had some slippage. All right. So third gear's on the inside. It's your direct drum. It's a 48 drum, so it's naturally taller. The 47 drums are a little bit lower. So I think that means it's automatically a five clutch. Yeah, five frictions in there from the factory, so that's nice. That's plenty of meat for us to work with. That's good. And there's all sorts of tricks to get more in there. Go. Ooh, that does not look too good. Nope. Right there. Ooh, boy. There you go. There she is. You can see all the friction material is just gone. Dude. Straight toasted. Like this one right here looks like a steel, yeah. but it's a friction. <laughs> oh, yeah. Boy. Yep. And we just flip her over. That one's welded. Oh no, that's a steel. Never mind. So they're not welded, but they are bent and coned and completely burnt out trash. Very worn out. Whether you had a leaky clutch seal, 
or an improper set valve body or whatever, you probably just overpowered this gear. Third gear's right when they come up full boost. You got a 472 single stock injector. Yeah. That's right when it's really gonna start hitting. If you're in tow haul, the converter will lock in third automatically. Right. So you make a lot of power in this gear, you flat out. To me, it looks like you overpowered it on okay. stock transmission. It's also why you don't have reverse. Yeah. This gear applies in reverse. So that's why you had no third and no reverse. Here's your band. Typical wear. Typical style, stock-ish band. This yeah. one might be upgraded. I don't memorize them like everybody else does. It's supposed to have more rivets in it, right, if it's yeah. upgraded? Yeah, I think this one's upgraded. I have the bands that I trust in and I run. That's a good sign that your gear cluster here slid completely out, no problems. That's good. Okay. If you have a cooler flow restriction, they generally uh, will gall up and basically weld to the overdrive retainer. Okay. Um, so that's this good that it just slid right out. That's a very good sign. Yeah. Yeah. So you always kind of just feel your in play. It looks good. I don't see any other damage. Right now, we're not going to take this apart. Okay. Because we're just going for the major destruction. The major destruction. Yep. However, you do see these great big wear chunks. Mm. Ooh, boy, yeah. So that is where it is driven by the direct drum. Okay. You hold all this crap together. Direct drum comes in here and that's how it sits. Right. Now, however they set the trans up dictates how high up off it is. So you can see how that's where it's set and right. it just whoops the crap out. So we will be upgrading this. I think okay. this is called the sun shell. So we're gonna upgrade that dude because that right there it's just gonna make more metal in your fresh trans and more noise and it's yeah. just gonna get a Not lot worse. Having. Right, it's, Not it's gonna get a whole lot worse. There's a big nice burr right there on the overdrive clutch retainer. So we're gonna replace that with a nicer, a lot nicer unit. Okay, yeah, you can kinda see it there. Generally, yeah. that's, that's improper in play or something happened in the shim stack. Okay. And I think, yeah, that's the only damage I see right there for that. And then now we have overdrive, so now we have fourth gear in the back. Yep, got our OD housing back here. Has a set of gears similar to how that works. Has two clutch packs, park hall, out output speed sensor, output shaft. So this right here is fourth gear. Okay. This whole clutch set. So it's got a little wire retainer that kind of holds it in. They just fall out, kind of like all the other ones. Same thing. Not terrible. Yeah. Stock style frictions and steels, but not burnt. Probably could have got another long time out of it. Just subject to your right foot, really. Right. Not bad. Got a little snap ring up here. This guy can be a real booger. Wait. Oh, no. I forgot these two guys. It's a little springy doodad. Okay. And yeah, nobody really uses him. And then that one was the real one. Okay. So then you just open that little doodad there. And that's it. You got your park pole down here. He kind of just goes down there and picks up, goes into those teeth. All right. Seal. Not much. This is your overdrive direct. So, this is kind of like a grenade, for lack of better words. <laughs> okay. Stock output shaft, metal change. There's a great big huge honking spring in here. He's like this big around. He's about this tall. You compress this, and there's a snap ring in here, a snap ring in here, and that whole thing, 800 PSI per inch. Like big spring, yep. So, it's a grenade. So there's two ways to do this. We'll do it the right way. <laughs> so you got the big spring here. This guy always gets replaced. He's known for breaking. He's wavy, so he's a spring. And you'll see these break in three or four pieces all the time. Okay. So that's the first like stage, if you want to call it that. Okay. Now we go back to the bench. Let's do it out. 
And that's your final uh, clutch kit. This is Overdrive Direct. Okay. They're the smallest, but they rarely ever fail. And you notice they did a really good job. There's a whole bunch of them. Yeah. A whole bunch of them, right? Look at all them dudes. Wow. And you can see how they are stuck yeah, they, together. And you see the original marks on there too. Yeah. Even yep. So this is pretty good, but rarely ever does this really fail. Yeah. Like you would be surprised how far a stock friction, stock steel, stock count, like horsepower wise, how far they can go. It's pretty <laughs> impressive. Really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then uh, the grenade, this is the real grenade. Okay. We'll take it apart in a minute. Bearing. More gears, more gears, one-way sprag, you get that in backwards, you know it real quick, <laughs> and bearing, and that's it. And then you got some snap rings in here to take this dude off, and then snap ring back here, you can press the shaft out and press the bearing off, but all that's pretty boring and nothing ever really happens right there. If you okay. make a whole lot of power, you can break all this real, real quick. But you know, it's pretty much the gist of how it works. Do it. You're close. I'm gonna force it this time. Hey, 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 hey! Yeah! See? Ooh, man, your hand was close there. Nah. Nice. That's the grenade. That is a big spring. See, that's the grenade. Oh, my transmission is apart on the table. Slightly. Some assembly required. <laughs> Some assembly. The cool thing is, on teardown, you can make a great big freaking mess and nobody really cares. Right. When you go back together, it's a whole another story. <laughs> mm -hmm. We don't even use this bench to build them. It's yeah. just teardown? Yep. Go to the other bench, get it all clean, wash off everything up, you know. So teardown, it's fun, it's messy, it's nasty. You get to see cool things like all this cool stuff right here, you know? Yep. Those guys. Destroyed Those clutches. guys, yeah. It's like a little trampoline. Dang. <laughs> transmission trampoline. A transmission trampoline. Yeah. Wow. I like it. That's it. So what do we have here? Got the lower reverse drum thing, lower reverse band. This comes on in manual one and reverse. And then this is the one-way roller sprag that blows apart. It goes in the very bottom. So if you leave really, really, really hard in D, you can break that, you can overpower that. That's why everybody goes full manual valve body because it applies the lower reverse band in manual one, which holds the drum. So you're not only just pushing on the sprag, you're also pushing on the lower reverse band. This is the overdrive piston retainer. Okay. It holds the lower reverse drum with a snap ring. Overdrive piston comes in here that squishes for the overdrive braking clutch, which makes fourth gear. Okay. It's a Sonex piece. It's real nice. It's got some damage. Kind of goes back to our end play that we were seeing. Yeah. So we'll probably replace it. So I saw something funny. I was taking out the uh, little plugs for like your pressure gauges and stuff. They're all kind of everywhere. Right. And I saw that dude. So they like lost the stock plug and put in a exhaust manifold style plug. That's fine, we can change that. And I saw this big old hunk of silicone. Oh boy. And it kind of made me think that maybe somebody was hiding something. On our overdrive, these bad boys are known for cracking and you can see how it's kind of wet there. Right, right. So the chances of this having the hairline crack that everybody talks about is really good. They're just known for forming a hairline crack. It's right here around this bolt hole. Normally it kind of comes up and across and through over here. Yeah. But for whatever reason, you don't ever really see it. So I think we're gonna put one of these on. So what we got here is we're gonna take out the second gear lever. Okay. This is the five to one, five O stock lever. It really just sucks and creates a lot of bind and it just sucks so it breaks so right here we got a plug you get it out with that little hex plug right there in the corner see it well that bad boy is known for leaking so anytime you got a leak in the front area you always kind of want to keep that guy in mind okay but obviously we have ways that will, they don't leak but it's definitely known to leak yeah let's take him out 
flip her all back up. Give her a little wiggle wiggle most of the time. And she falls out. And that's your 5 0 right there. More than likely, the servo right here is completely stock. It looks stock. Oh, but it won't come out. There it is. There it is. These little things are cantankerous. It's good vocab word for the day. Yeah, I like that word. Cantankerous. I'm cantankerous. <laughs> There she goes. It'll cut the crap out of you too if you let it. All those edges are razor sharp in there. It's all slick and nasty and dirty. You yep. horse around, slice her open really good. Yeah, yeah stock is all get out. Yeah. Obviously, we're gonna replace this with a Go-Ren uh, four seal billet body bottom, and then we'll do the heavy duty spring and the Sonex curve uh, cover that has the the o-ring and all that crap in there uh, what does that do like when you put those billet parts in like what does that help prevent or like what does that fix the best thing they do is they just seal off better so now you're able to hold the pressure that you make and you don't have any extra leakage some of them have real nice bronze bushings that makes the servo rod guide really straight uh, some of them have different square inches of surface area for different apply rates and pressures Right. There's a lot of choices and there's a whole lot of opinions. Most of the problems associated around 4748 are with the second gear servo and all the things around that. So you're talking direct drum clearance, the type of band you run, the lever you run, how many turns from the inch pounds, and there's all sorts of opinions. Line pressure, the amount of springs in the direct clutch, it all comes into play. Everybody has a different opinion. I right. know what works for me. So that's what we're doing. I found the happy range for my setup to be happy, so that's where I put them at. This will have the same line pressure the Dooley has. It'll have the same clutch clearance the Dooley has. The so Dooley works. works real nice. It, does. it puts in work. That transmission's been in that truck over a year and a half. It's like just held some, everything that There's you've something done to say about that, you know? Yeah. And just so we're clear, guys, Chris doesn't drive his truck easy. Oh, hell no. Like, Not even a little bit easy. Like, not even tries to be easy. Like, no, we uh, we like doing rolling burnouts pretty much everywhere. E every day. All right, so we're gonna start the most important job of the whole process: cleaning. Cleaning is very important. All these parts need to get cleaned up. I'm gonna be doing the cleaning, and we're gonna be using our good old parts washer over here, hand washer, and we're just gonna be getting it done. It's not the most fun or the most glamorous part of doing a build, but if you don't do it, you will pay the price significantly. All right, well, we got all the parts cleaned up. Did all this cleaning myself. This is probably, I hope I get to help more in this build, but as of right now, this is kind of what I have been able to do. But yeah, I got it all cleaned up, all looking nice. This is all the stuff that we will be reusing. All the stuff that we're not using is over here. Of course, we will be replacing all this stuff with a bunch of new goodies. All right, guys, so we made it back from Chris Patterson's shop. We had an awesome time down there. Big thanks to Chris and his team for helping me out with the trans and for all the fun stuff that we got to do down there. Um, it was just an awesome experience. Chris is a great guy, and I'm excited to continue to work with him in the future. So basically, we got the whole trans disassembled. We're going to be going back later to get it reassembled. And uh, next episode, guys, we're going to be working on the Jeep. We're going to get the front axle removed from it. And we're also going to be doing some engine maintenance uh, as well because it's been beat to death. So anyway, hope you all enjoyed the episode, and I will catch you all in the next one. Peace.